One thing I want to do more this year and in the future in general is visit more card shows and gaming shows. One that I actually visited on the weekend was London Card Show. It was my first time going and I wanted to make this video about whether or not it's worth you going, what was good, what was bad and a look at what I picked up because I spent far too much money. I think I spent well over £600 at this show and there wasn't really much I picked up. It was all quality over quantity. That's something I like to tell myself, but uh, we could probably argue that when I show you. So what is the London Card Show? It's quite simply a card show dedicated to sports cards, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Magic the Gathering. There's new uh, card games there like Acroma. I'm a big fan of Acroma, what they're doing over there. So check out our full review on our website if you want to learn more about that. There was also a load of accessories including Vault X and I managed to snag some like slab protectors as well. Um, so there's plenty to choose from there. It was more of a show dedicated to sports and Pokemon. Probably a good 50-50. Um, there's plenty of Pokemon and plenty of sports cards to choose from. So if that's your jam, you'll certainly find something there. But for me, I was going for majority of our Pokemon based purchases that I done, but I also wanted to look for a little bit like left wing fictional cards For example, um, there was Game Boy cards there that I picked up Zelda stuff Nintendo cards basically um, And there was Disney cards and some really old-school ones Which I want to share with you which I picked up as well So in terms of what you can get there There's plenty to choose from in terms of like what I would have liked to see done better was the 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 crowd like it was a little bit crammed because what they probably don't kind of look at is how many people take backpacks. I'm one of those guys that take backpacks and I fill it up. But actually, when you go down the aisles through the show, you are back to back. I was like hitting through people because you've got like one person on one side looking and another person on the other side looking at the, the vendors and their backpacks. The, 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 the actual walkway is tiny. So there was a lot of like, excuse me, pushing through, shoving through one way systems that weren't one way. And it was just a bit all over the place. But after like two o'clock, because um, it opened at 10, it started to die down. There was only one food stall as well. There was a food stall and a snack stall. That's pretty much all there was. So if you wanted like a hearty meal, there was nothing. It was just burgers or hot dogs that you could choose from. So something extra there would have been nice to see. But overall, it was a pleasant experience. The weather was a little bit crappy, but there was plenty of vendors to choose from and a wide selection of cards, which is the important thing. So what did I snag while I was there. And what did I spend my £600 on? Well, let me show you. My first biggest purchase, and it was one of the first uh, vendors that I went to, and I knew straight off the bat that it was going to be an expensive day. These are special in many ways because they're, they're just a little bit unique. So there's a wide range in here. So all of these here, I got, I paid for £170. And they're basically a wide range of old, I haven't, oh my, my storage container is falling apart. These are like old school Nintendo sticker cards, or they call them tip cards, where on the back of them you've got your tip of your, your Nintendo game, and on the front you've got stickers. So you've got like Super Mario 2, you've got Punch Out, they've got a little bit of Zelda as well, and there's just a, it's just really, really nice collectible cards and they were all in impeccable condition like almost minty maybe like gem mint and he was doing he was selling the whole bunch for 175 pounds so everything in here as well and you get on to these scratch cards as well so it's 33 of these sticker cards and then these scratch cards here i don't know if you can see you can see the the points where you scratch off look there's tons Again, Super Mario, so there's 10 in a set, and then you move on to Zelda. Look at this. They're just stunning cards that I've never seen before. You can grade them. PSA 10s go for, you know, a couple hundred quid a pop, and these are all in great condition as well. So I think eventually I will grade these, but there's close to 110 cards here for me to grade. So that would cost a handsome penny, but... You'll see the trend. I'm kind of going a little bit different 
on my purchases this year. I'm going a little bit left wing, mainly like Nintendo and video game collectible cards is what I'm after. Now let's look at the PSA or the graded cards because then it, they're again quite expensive. So that was like 175 pounds. And let's show you some of my graded cards. This is my first Pokemon card ass card. Card ass card, yeah, technically I'm not wrong. These are old school Japanese Pokemon cards. This one came out in 1997. I know it's only a PSA 5, but it's something that I wanna look more into and I love the card design with the tips and the description on the back along with statistics. They're just stunning prism cards that I couldn't help but fall in love with. And I also had another one here, which is a little older or it says 1995 but these top sun cards i think they were releasing throughout 96 97 but again a stunning card here with the classic illustrations only a psa 5 but again i'm looking deeper into just unique takes on pokemon cards and the japanese really did come out with some classic ones before the original card game and you may be wondering what the hell is this in? Well, I saw a vendor who are going by the name of, or someone selling them, these things. So that if I zoom out here, whoop, these are called slab mags. Now, I feel like um, cases for PSA graded cards are gonna become more popular. For example, I'm testing a couple here for an article. So we are going through our re review process at the moment on these things. These are really, really cheap, terrible, don't advise these at all. But companies are moving towards um, plastic and metal. So this is actually an alloy, alloy? Wow, I actually just said that, alloy card guard or slab mag. It's got UV protection as well. There's a plastic casing over it as well, so it's not gonna get damaged, but the whole process is a little bit fidgety here. So you lock that in, or you can open it up like so. How have I done that? So that's actually unlocking it, and then you open it up, and you can put your card in. But, you know, the, the measurements, are a little off at the moment so there is a little bit of shaking so i need to do some more testing but i'm liking these i feel like these are going to be popular over the next coming years in terms of accessories for your slabs under my card ass card again because i run another website and another channel called retro dodo i'm big into my retro gaming so this was like a mix between both collectible card games and retro gaming because these are actually Game Boy cards that came with a pack of gum I think. Um, I'm hoping to get in a sealed one soon to open up on the channel so if you want to see more info on this and live opening do hit the subscribe button. It's from 1993 and I think the company who made them was called Amarol and they're just basically little, they almost look like cigarette cards that are based on a wide number of classic Nintendo Game Boy games and like are um, the card, the, what card did I just show you? This one with the tips, sorry, the Nintendo what tips cards. This is similar because it has tips on the back as well. Another, and I think it was my last graded card is this. This is a 2010 Super Mario Bros. gold card or a hollow card, shall I say, that's from the Nintendo Wii packs. A little bit left wing, but the guy selling this, he originally sold it for I think 150 and then wanted 120 for it, but I got him down to 110 cash. And these are some, <coughs> excuse me, something that I think will be more popular if Nintendo launch another card game dedicated to Super Mario and even Smash Bros. Because if they came out of a Smash Bros card game, Ooh, I think it would bring a lot of collectors to the scene. But I love this because it was a little bit different. And this is the Gold Series card as well. And it had a super high Beckett rating of 9.5 as well. So cards like this is kind of what I'm focusing on at the moment in time. Um, so this is one that I just had to add to my collection. Now, a little more left wing. I went a little bit crazy on a few products here. And you're probably wondering what the hell are these? So here are like Pac-Man rub off stickers. 
These are uh, really, really cool. They're selling for like five pound a pop. I bought a couple of them as well. We're gonna do a short on them. So again, hit subscribe, follow us on socials. We'll open a couple of these up. Again, you're kind of seeing the retro game slash card collection uh, process or, or uh, trend in my snags here. Uh, I, I, I found some Mickey Panini stuff, like Disney and Mickey stuff ever since the launch of Disney Lorcana or the reveal, shall I say. It's going through the roof, so I think Disney cards is a good investment at this moment in time. I got some of these. I've never seen these before. I think they're like magnets or stickers or, you know, a collectible game that I want to look into. They're called Pokemon Action Flips, like £5 a pop, nothing crazy. And then again, you've got like classic toy cra trading cards. You know what? I'm going to open one of these up right now. I've got two. Let's open one of these up. These are just more like kind of... It's like, well, that one was already open. Wow, did that guy... What about this one? Is this one open as well? Imagine if this one was open as well. That one is sealed, but this one was already open. That's not good. Look at this. They'll just pop out the top. Okay, well, let's take a look at these. Okay, so they're trading cards based on classic, like, retro toys. You can see here we have the... Darth Vader action figure. The Wild Wild West lunchbox. Is there anything on the back of these? Yeah, tips, current value, how much they sold for. Okay, that's a little bit unique. Okay, now we're talking the Star Trek phaser battle game. This is cool because if you don't follow Retro Dodo or other channel, we review all this kind of stuff, like those kind of handhelds and things. We've got instant life sea monkeys. We got the Popeye color form set. Imagine there's a handout. Lost in Space and Cecil in the music box. That's pretty cool. I can imagine the Darth Vader Star Wars one there. That That's probably highly sought after. So stuff like this, I'm really kind of into at the moment. Again, another video game slash bubble gum. Uh, let's open this one as well. Let's do it. So in the past, you know, 80s, they had this was a thing where they'd sell like cards with bubble gum. Uh, the only the only downfall is that the bubble gum you can't eat it anymore, and they sometimes damage the cards, as you could see there. So I don't think people really grade these. They're usually just kind of like stickers. Turbo is gas. We got the Frogger game. I'm guessing. We've got the Robot Killer. Yeah, no, it's just some classics, and these are like scratch-off games. Oh, the Donkey Kong one. I don't have that one. And Turbo. You know, cool stuff like this I'm really into. Uh, not super high valuable, but just something for research purposes so we can create articles on them, get media, get photos, open for videos and stuff. This is another one, video game crossover. Tomb Raider starring Laura Croft. This is a collectible card game. I will open this up as well, actually, because um, this was only £10 a pop. I looked at it on eBay as well. They're very affordable, not too rare. You know, uh, I think they made a bunch of them and they just didn't sell very many. So we're going to unbox this quickly. It's not a card game that I have really looked into, but I'm a big fan of Tomb Raider, so I had to buy it. And this box isn't in the best condition. But hey, I don't think there's any kind of boosters in here. This is just a straight up card game. We have a couple of dice, a little Tomb Raider figurine. We've got the collect. Oh, there are booster packs. Let's open a couple of these. So you got like the user manual there. That's a pretty thick user manual. Wow. Is it colored? Not colored, but wow. Okay. Got some tokens and stuff. It looks like you've got your theme deck, depth. I guess that's how deep she's exploring. And one booster pack, which we're gonna open. I, I have no idea what the rarity is on this kind of thing. Um, but again, first time I'm opening up a Tomb Raider booster pack. Okay, this is nostalgic because this reminds me of the old video games when she's like fighting the tiger in the caves and stuff, snake eyes, wow. You know, the design isn't too crazy. I don't even know if there's like hollows or stuff. It doesn't look like it. Um, but you know, it just looks cool. 
Again, research purposes. And you're probably just, you might be thinking research purposes, but no, we, we like to dive into this kind of stuff to play, test, and write articles for the, for the site. So pushing that aside, we've got a couple of kind of loose cards here. I'm a big fan of Tops. I actually just picked up a clear Pokemon Charizard, Gem Mint, and I saw this one for like 20 pounds, and it was really good condition. So I'm tempted to grade this transparent, or they call it clear Tops cards here. I'm a big fan of Tops from when I was a kid. More card-ass cards. The guy that I actually bought the Blastoise from did me a deal. He knocked 10 pound off this and chucked in two free uh, cards as well, which are in really good condition. And finally, a couple of other snags, like th this kind of stuff here. I think this is another Top Sun card. Uh, but this one here is what I'm really into, like Nintendo-based fictional cards. This is Link here. Really bad quality, but again, I just wanted it for the collection. Um, so, yeah. There it is, that is what I snagged. Uh, most important to me are probably these, the Nintendo sticker and scratch cards. Um, they're just really, really cool, all in great quality um, and condition, and it only cost me 175 pounds. So I might grade them, might not, I just can't afford grading all of them at the moment. So yeah, really, really excited. I love the card show, it was great, I'll be going again. I think they do a few a year, I'll be going again, so um, do subscribe if you wanna see more pulls from that. But this is the kind of stuff that I'm into and that I'm diving into over the next few months especially like Nintendo cards and stuff. This stuff, I love it, I love it. So if you're into any of this, do hit subscribe. Um, we hope you enjoy our content and make sure to head over to the website. We're doing wonderful things over there. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.